This video will help you graph tangent and cotangent functions, understanding the period and other special characteristics of the parent graphs of these functions. Let's just take a look at the table for the values of 0 to pi for the function of tangent x. At 0 radians, tangent becomes sine over cosine. Since sine is 0 and cosine is 1, then the tangent at x equals 0 radians is 0. At pi over 4, we have a point whose coordinates are square root 2 over 2 comma square root 2 over 2. If we're, if we're dividing sine x over cosine x, which essentially results in us taking the y coordinate and dividing it by the x coordinate, then at pi over 4 we have a tangent value of 1. At pi over 2, x is 0, y is 1. So we're looking at 1 over 0, which is undefined. We'll talk about what that means in a moment. At 3 pi over 4, we're now in the second quadrant where we have coordinates negative root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2. So tangent is negative 1. At pi, the coordinates are negative 1, 0, y over x. So tangent is 0. And so we can start to look at what will happen in this periodic repetition of y values. As we said before, we know that we find tangent of the angle by taking sine of it, sine of that angle divided by cosine of that angle. And notice that cosine is in the denominator. So we are going to have asymptotes wherever cosine of x equals 0 because we cannot divide by 0. We don't have a method that allows us to do that. So let's think about where that happens on the tangent curve. Cosine of an angle will equal 0 whenever x is 0. Well, sorry, whenever um, x coordinate is 0. So that happens when the angle is pi over 2. It happens again at 3 pi over 2. And it'll keep happening as we round the circle over and over again. We'll go back to 5 pi over 2, etc. If I go backwards, then that will happen at negative pi over 2. It will happen at negative 3 pi over 2, negative 5 pi over 2, etc. So what does this look like when we get it on a graph? As we move forward, again, remembering that tangent can be found by taking sine x over cosine x. Let's graph that table that we saw before. I've already lined up the asymptotes for us. So what we saw was that at 0 radians, tangent is 0. At pi over 4 radians, tangent is 1. At pi over 2 radians, tangent is undefined, so I have an asymptote. But let's work backwards. What's going to happen at negative pi over 4? At negative pi over 4, I'm in the fourth quadrant, so tangent's going to be negative 1. Those are the only points we're going to focus on. And one thing we do need to be aware of is that tangent will be concave up until it crosses over zero and then it's going to turn into a graph that's concave down. So what you see here is one period of tangent. After that it repeats itself all over again. So if I'm at pi, tangent is zero. If I'm at 3 pi over 4, tangent is negative 1. If I'm at 5 pi over 4, tangent is 1. And so again, we get this nice repetitious pattern going here. And I can do it the same moving at negative pi, negative 3 pi over 4, negative 5 pi over 4. We get the same thing all over again. So this is the graph of your tangent curve. It kind of will remind you of a cubic except cubics don't have asymptotes, and cubic is one continuous curve as opposed to three curves that are broken up over time. So features of tangent, what is the period? How long does it take tangent to complete its phase? So that's from asymptote to asymptote. 
as I go to, from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, that's a distance of pi. Notice that this is different than what we've seen before with the sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant curves. The period of tangent is pi. Where are the asymptotes? The asymptotes that we see occur at negative 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, also at positive pi over 2, positive 3 pi over 2. If I want to know what the general equation of the asymptotes would be as I enter get rid of that, sorry. If I want to know what the general equation of the asymptotes would be as I continue for multiple periods, never ending infinite periods of pi, then what can I say? I can say that x would equal pi over 2, and then I would have an asymptote every pi radians after that. So I write it as x equals pi over 2 plus n pi. And apparently I got carried away with erasing and erased our tangent curves. So I'm just putting those back quickly so you can see what those look like. And there we have our tangent graph. Now let's talk about cotangent. As a reminder, cotangent of x is 1 over the tangent of x. It's a reciprocal function. So just as we talk about the relationship between secant and cosine as reciprocal functions, or cosecant and sine as reciprocal functions, cotangent and tangent have that same relationship. If tangent is increasing, cotangent is decreasing. If tangent is decreasing, cotangent is increasing. What we need to be aware of also is that this means that cotangent will result from dividing the cosine of an angle by the sine of an angle. For that reason, we're going to have asymptotes in different places. Now the asymptotes will appear wherever sine of x equals zero on the unit circle. So where are those locations? Well, sine of x equals zero whenever the angle measure is zero. It happens again whenever the angle measure is pi. If I go in the opposite directions from zero, I'm going to find it happens again wherever the angle is equal to negative pi. So anytime I'm laying on that horizontal axis for the sine curve, I will have asymptotes for the cotangent curve. Cotangent will have values of zero wherever the cosine value is zero. And for this particular curve, that happens whenever x is pi over 2. It will also happen when x is 3 pi over 2 or negative pi over 2. So those are some places where we can expect cotangent to equal 0. Now, when cosine is root 2 over 2, and sine is root 2 over 2, cotangent is going to equal 1. We saw that happen with the tangent curve at pi over 4. So if we do that here for cotangent, we have pi over 4, comma 1, and it will equal negative 1 when I'm in that fourth quadrant, when I'm in the second or the fourth quadrant, excuse me, which would be 3 pi over 4 or 5 pi over 4. So I see that here. And so my cotangent curve does the reciprocal of my tangent curve. So what I will see from cotangent is a curve that falls as I move from left to right. I still have that matter of concaving up versus concaving down depending on where I am. So that shows you a couple of periods of the cotangent curve. And we can get a little bit of the cotangent curve over here on the right side and not so much of it on the left side. It will be kind of hard to see the rest of that. So what's the period of cotangent? Well, it's the same as the period of pi, of tangent, which is pi. And what are the asymptotes of cotangent? We can see this happens when x equals 0, or x equals pi, or x equals negative pi. And in general, you'll notice that those asymptotes are a distance of pi apart. So the general equation we can write is x equals n times pi, where n is any number that you choose to plug in. That's your basic tangent or and or cotangent curves that happens for that cotangent curve. <clears throat> so now with transformations, whenever I have 
a period change whenever I have B equal to something other than one, one cycle per pi radians, then the period's going to change, and it's going to change by a value of pi over B. This is similar to the 2 pi over B that we have been working with. So make sure you keep that in mind, that tangent and cotangent both have different periods. And the last thing with transformations, asymptotes of the tangent function are going to occur wherever cosine of x minus c equals 0 if we're talking about a phase shift. If we're talking about a factor of b, it's going to occur at x equals 1 over b times pi over 2 plus n pi. For cotangent, it's going to happen where sine of x minus c equals 0 or where x equals n pi divided by b. So hopefully this gives you an idea. When we come to class on Monday, then you'll be able to graph these with all of their transformations. As always, let me know if you have any questions by sending an email, or you can fill out the video reflection form below. Talk to you soon.